No, I mean, even if you don't like me, come talk to me. I'll respond. I'll respond to you. Yeah, just come and throw some hate and some shade, and, yeah. and Brandon will reply with a, okay. What's up, everyone? Joe Gray here today with another AMA warm up where I get a chance to talk to our upcoming AMA guests. Today, I've got my buddy, Brandon Campbell. Brandon, what's up, dude? Hey, Joe. What's going on, man? Hey, good. Same stuff. All right. So, Brandon, if for some reason you don't know who he is, we're going to ask him five questions like we've been asking the other people with number four is custom to Brandon himself. So, if you do not know Brandon, hopefully at the end of this, you will know whether you should hop in and join his AMA. Uh, which I will have details on the dates and all that kind of stuff in the description below. So our very first question, Mr. Brandon Campbell, is who are you and why are you here? Yeah, sure. So as you said, Brandon Campbell Diamond here. I've been making YouTube videos around fitness-related content for 14 years now. So at the time when I started my channel, most people knew me as Brandon Campbell from Campbell Fitness. I kind of did that as a play because it was not socially acceptable to be on YouTube. In fact, I got made fun of quite a bit. This is before influences were influencing all of you out there. So I've been making content for a long time. I got my first 100,000 subscribers just simply based off of supplement reviews and just training logs, which eventually led to me building my own home gym in uh, 2015 or so. And at the time, there wasn't a ton of equipment reviews out there. So I got my next 130,000 or so subscribers on YouTube off of mostly equipment related reviews. So if you've been watching me for a long time, you've been through the gamut. If you're newer, most people just think I'm an equipment review guy, which I don't really pin pinhole myself as necessarily. I just uh, like to talk equipment and I like to be part of Reddit and I read all the stuff. So it's a fun way for me to interact and engage with people. Nice. I like it. Uh, all right. So number two, Tell me about your lifting experience. So competitive, yep. sports, general health stuff, whatever it might be. Sure, yeah. So the, the quick too long didn't read of it is I got into training like most people did back in the day for high school sports, playing basketball, something that really helped sports performance. That led me to eventually go to college to play basketball, where unfortunately I got hurt. And I also fortunately learned that beer and girls were a lot more fun than playing Division three basketball as a 6'4 white male. Um and at the time I got hurt, you know, that was like the first time I've had any extended break from aerobic activity. So I was always like very active aerobically from basketball and sports all year round. But when I was hurt and I had stress fractures in both of my feet, preventing me from playing for like six months and I was just like eating and I was training as normal. It's like, hey, you know, eating and not running a lot actually leads to some success in the gym. So I got into training for that, mostly like bro splits. Spent a lot of time on the bodybuilding.com forums when that was a thing. So dating myself a little bit there. Uh, and then eventually I, I just missed the competitive aspect of it. So when I turned 30, which was about 13 years ago, I'm 43 as of last week, uh, I got into powerlifting. So it's always something that I like, general strength training and powerlifting gave me that competitive outlet. And that's kind of been like my baby for the last 13 years. And since this date, I've done like 15 sanctioned meets and a few garage gym competitions as well. There we go. I like it. If I remember correctly, uh, you've talked about, because uh, so I spent a lot of time on the bodybuilding forums too. I don't think I was doing anything like you were doing. I was just, I was probably reading your stuff and didn't even know it. Uh, you came up similar time as like uh, BioLane, right? So Lane Norton yes, and stuff like that. Straight flexed on bodybuilding.com. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So, I like it. All right, number three, what is your experience with our home gym and the broader home gym community? Yeah, so as far as the the home gym community as a whole goes, my experience has been, it's been a great outlet for me to connect with people that are like-minded. Like, I have a lot of friends that don't even lift, and I hate to admit that, but like a lot of the people in my close personal circles, like outside of maybe my wife, who's a, a training fiend like myself, it's like a lot of people just aren't interested in training. So the home gym community has given me like a, a spot to talk shop with a lot of people, yep. especially as I've like evolved my home gym to be more on the bougie side, like spending more than your average person and trying to get customization. It's just been a way to like collect or connect, I should say, with with like-minded people in terms of like the Reddit Co aspect. Collect is goes, right too. 
<laughs> yeah. As, as far as like the, the Reddit aspect goes and stuff, like I try to visit there and talk to people as well uh, when I can. I love the AMAs because like if, if anyone follows me on YouTube, uh, I have this uh, tendency, I don't know if it's good or bad, like I have to respond to every single comment. Like yeah. if someone writes me a message, like I have to respond back and I've been in the bad habit of going back and forth with some people and certain <laughs> things that we don't see eye, eye on. But like, I like that interaction and it's easy for me to do. So like oh. the 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 home gym community is like a great aspect for me to like meet people that are like-minded in some cases not like-minded and have some very thorough discussions. Awesome. Yeah. I, uh, early on in my YouTube career. So you and I, I think have talked before Brandon and I have similar, uh, corporate experience in terms of working with new hire employees and training and different stuff like that. And I've told people like that prepared me for putting myself out on YouTube and because you put your heart and your soul into like designing a, a training course for somebody and it takes you six months to develop like a three hour thing or whatever. And then someone goes, uh, one person says it's not long enough and another person says it's too long. And then the next person says, I don't like the jokes. And the next person says, I love the jokes. And then, <laughs> right? So yep. I learned really early on in that uh, corporate experience that you can't make everybody happy. And so coming to YouTube and going, all right, I put a lot into this video and a few people are like, you're weak or you don't know what you're talking about or whatever. I just go, okay, how do I flip that and have a conversation with them yeah, without my, uh... just my common response now to YouTube people is if it's something like where I know, cause again, like I have the personality type where I have to respond, I have to get the last yeah. word. And like, if they say something that just like kind of grinds my gears, I just respond with like an, an LOL at this point or a K <laughs> and just, just write it off as like, I responded, yeah. but I'm also not going to be going back. And, and, go. and funnily enough, I know that you are full time now and what you're doing now, which yeah. great job by the way, is like, if you can start a YouTube channel or whatever, and you can, be comfortable talking to a camera by yourself, which is super awkward. If you haven't tried it, try it, but it yeah. makes you a great public speaker as well yeah. or speaking in front of groups. So like yeah. it, it has great carryover both ways in those yep. cases. Yep. Yeah. The, the one I always tell people is I had a guy who kept commenting about, I wasn't wearing shoes in a lot of my videos because for a while I was training like legitimately barefoot to see if it would help my feet. And it was just slanderous comments like crazy and so my responses were like hey man uh, if nobody told you today i love you and i hope you have a good day yeah and then he'd who hurt you <laughs> yeah <laughs> he'd come back on the next video something similar I'm like hey man i'm glad you're back that's so awesome hey how's your tuesday going right and it was just kill him with kindness until he finally tapped out <laughs> You end up growing some thick, thick skin when you put yourself out there on the internet. Yep. All right. Number four. This, this is the one for yourself. Tell me why basement gyms are better than garage gyms. Yeah, I'm going to, so I'm not going to tell you that they're better than garage gyms. I'm going to give you some pros for both just because any home gym is a good gym for me. And if you train in a garage, I'm sorry, but it still counts in my book. So <laughs> For the basement gym, I would say the biggest pros, number one, climate control. I'm in the Northeast and the winter gets really cold. The summers tend to get warmer, not as warm as like if you're down in Texas or something super humid, but like it's not fun to train in. So climate control for me is number one in the basement, usually stays pretty temperate. My gym is usually somewhere between 60 to 70 degrees at all times during the course of the year. Number two, I would say space. Most people generally speaking have more space in their basements talking actual footprint of the basement because that's sure. going to lead me to talk about something in a second for yep. garage gyms but just generally <laughs> you tend to have a little bit more space which also means the third point i'll kind of call out here is you can actually use your garage um so in my case like we have a two-car garage it's a nice garage be a shame if someone put a gym in it but yeah. like we can actually park our cars in there so like when it snows in the winter and whatnot and just for general storage it just makes more sense without having to get super creative like you've done in your own garage yep. gym. Yep. Although you are slowly creeping over to the other stall. I know yeah. that you're, getting, you're expanding your footprint. Yeah. So, my wife my wife and I have agreed a long time ago that 
the car will always have space in the garage. Yeah. You're going to get her a moped or something at some point <laughs> and just be like, it's there's space. It takes up one stall mat. And then baby. I got to get a new wife, I think. Yeah. Uh, so those are, those are basements. So garage, what I would see, cause I, I've done both, right? Like we, we were building yep. this house that we're in currently, I was relegated to a garage for about a year and a half, did a garage gym and a very small one stall car garage. Uh, so no, no car parking in there, but the biggest things there would be number one ceiling height, which is usually a deterrent mm -hmm. from a basement gym. Most basements tend to be eight feet or less. And there's like solutions for that. But if you have the overhead space, you can get a lot more creative and get some bigger pieces in there. Cause you had to Speaking go custom, right? Yeah. Well, no. So in the, so in the garage, no, my, actually my first basement, I had to cut stuff. So like I had to cut uh, my road 90 inch rack down to like 86 inches, but you have to work around some stuff like garage doors, which there are side mounts, which I think someone posted about recently, if I'm not too mistaken on their Instagram <laughs> page, um, my ceiling height's huge, but also, so speaking of getting equipment in that takes up vertical space, but in a garage, if you have stuff delivered to your house, it's basically just like pallet yep. jack from the truck to your just garage. Right on in. Not me. Open the bulkhead, <laughs> disassemble everything, carry it down by myself, put it back together. Try so not getting... beat up the walls on the way down. Exactly. I yep. almost killed myself bringing in a, a piece by myself because it was like, I think it was the Williams extension, leg curl, leg mm. extension, which is like 200 pounds and like eight feet long. And I'm carrying it down this concrete set of stairs by myself. Um, but getting equipment in is a lot easier in a garage setting. And then finally, probably, I think the most common reason people like training in the garage is probably cause you can open the doors, right? Yeah. If it's nice out, you want to assert your neighborhood dominance or shove it in your HOA's face, you can <laughs> garage up there and be that alpha dad or whatever yeah, you need to be. There you know. you go. Pros you, to both. No did judgment. You, did you ever, do you know, I think his name's Jonathan Harder. He's a competitive powerlifter. He was active yeah, he's on out in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Did you ever see his bait when he moved into his basement and he got all the strive equipment like machines down in the basement and he even got the dyna body mono down by cutting it in half pulling it down and then welding it back together yep jonathan's a, a good a good dude i've talked to him here number one strong guy but also yeah. he has a uh a great mind and I don't want to get too into it because I don't think he wants people to talk about it. like, but uh, from like a design standpoint and companies that he's worked for, he's come up with a lot of cool stuff. And like, I'm always tracking him down because he has all the iron wolf bars, which I've yeah. always wanted to get my hands on. So I'm like, Hey, you're going to you yeah. sell some. So yep. good, good guy. Yeah. He was a regular on the uh, equipment boards on bodybuilding, which is where I uh, used to talk to him. So yeah, I think his username is like smoke and hawk or something. Uh, yeah. That, that sounds yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Last one. Most important one one reason or whatever reason you come up with why people should join your AMA. Yeah. So I'm going to say this and people might not believe me, but I am not your influencers influencer, meaning that I do make some money off of this side hustle that I have, but it is a side hustle. It's not my main focus. And if my channel doesn't grow and if I don't make commissions off stuff, I don't really care. Sure. I tend to push stuff that I use every day in my gym. So like stuff comes in and out all the time. If you've watched the evolution of my gym. So I feel like I have a pretty fair take. I've gotten my hands on a lot of stuff and like, even like companies like Titan fitness, who I have a long standing beef with from s stealing my ideas to selling crappy equipment at times. Like I'll still recommend Titan equipment to people if it makes sense for them. So I, sure. I've tried to get away from selling people things and more of just saying like, here's this thing. Here's what I think it's good for. Here's what it might not be good for. You make the decision. So like, and I, I mentioned, I, I like responding to people. So like, if you have equipment questions from someone who's touched everything, equipment, shafts, bars, your, you name it, had my mitts on it. Like, I just think I, I give some good perspective versus, you know, selling. Yeah. yeah I like it. Yeah. My, uh, <clears throat> my goal, like, on uh, some of my most recent reviews, I told people, I want to make sure if you use my link that you have no buyer's remorse. You know exactly what you're getting, pros, cons, everything. And if you say, nope, Joe talked me out of it, good. Like, <laughs> I'm happy about that one. So, um, yeah. and I can say that watching your stuff over the years, I regularly recommend your stuff for that exact reason. You're one of the few that I feel like, like you said, I've seen you do reviews on things that I know you have no chance of making money on because there isn't an affiliate or there isn't a whatever. 
um, whereas most are only doing reviews on stuff that they can get a kickback. So yeah, I, I tried to, and it, it might have evolved over time. But like I've been telling people recently, like I don't even call what I do a review. It's more of just impressions. Like because sure. most of these people, the things you're buying, like you don't you don't get the chance to go to a store and try it. Yeah. Sometimes you can go to a gym and try it, but otherwise you're kind of buying blind. Yep. So I like to give my impressions and, and my goal isn't to convince you to buy something. There's only, I, think there, I think in the last couple of years, there's only been like two or three things that I've been like, you guys should buy this because it's a good product and it's a good deal. Yeah. But in most cases, it's more of if you're on the fence or thinking about buying this product, here's what you should yep. expect from it. Like here's what's going to be good and here's what I don't like. But I always also try to push that. Like, look, I have my own biases, right? Like I train for powerlifting. I like aggressive knurling. I like or prefer made in America where possible. Like I like to have my stuff more customized versus like your Bud Light of barbells. Like <laughs> I, I try to, I try to frame it appropriately, but again, end of the day, it's the the person's decision. And, and if someone says, Oh, I'm going to buy this. I'm like, I'm like, please let me know what you think. Like yeah. I want to, I want to know that, what yeah. you think about it. And I, I try to leverage that second and third hand information that I get from people off stuff as well, just to be like, here's a different perspective. Yeah. I said during my AMA, uh, you know, I'll review a good chunk of stuff. Uh, one thing I pretty much don't touch is barbells. And, uh, I go, there's already yourself. Uh, I used to point to JB uh, from GarageRooms.com all the time and said, I've had conversations with some of these guys back and forth and just gone, I don't, I don't know anything about barbells. I have no, <laughs> I should not talk about barbells. That's just not a good choice. I'll let them do it. They're the right uh, place, even though I'm sure there's a lot of money to be made in barbell affiliates and stuff. Um, but it's just not like, I don't, I don't get as excited about a new bar as like like yourself and some others. Um, so I, if I'm not excited, then my review's not good, and I don't enjoy it. So yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard these days, especially with barbells, because there's so many, and yeah. a lot of them are just relabeled versions of things sure. that already exist. So there's not a lot new, and like people always ask me like, what's the best barbell in my response is like depends right what do you like <laughs> knurling how do you train yep. what's your budget do you care if it's made in the usa do you yep. want type tolerances it's like there's a long list of questions but i'm, I'm glad you call that garage gym uh garage is it garage gyms.com garage gyms.com garage hyphen gyms.com yeah because he has he had a ton of great information i know early on i leveraged a lot of his stuff when i didn't own as many i was like well I, yeah. i'd compare it to xyz bar and i'd yep. ask him if i could pull some of his pictures and stuff yeah. like that he did a great job i still talk to him occasionally uh he's trying to get back into it just got other things going on so hopefully we'll see him come back soon yep uh, yeah all right man any last words no, I mean, even if you don't like me, come talk to me. I'll respond, I'll respond to you. Yeah, just come and throw some hate and some shade, and, yeah. and Brandon will reply with a okay or LOL. Yeah, normally, <laughs> normally I hijack other people's AMA, so uh, I'm due. There we go. Good deal, man. All right. That's it oh, for thanks, us Joe. today. Yeah, man. Uh, like I said, I will put the details in the description below so that way you can come and talk to Brandon, ask him all your pertinent questions about home gyms and whatever other stuff i'm sure you could ask him about whatever and he'll answer it so that's right uh, yep come on over and that's it cool later man see ya